Thank you very much for inviting me to Oslo Freedom Forum. I personally appreciate the activities by Human Rights Foundation for the improvement of human rights in North Korea. I especially agree with Human Rights Foundation's mission to unite people in the common cause of defending human rights and promoting liberal democracy throughout the world. My name is Tae Yong Ho, and I was the deputy ambassador of North Korean embassy in London and defected North Korean regime last year. The reason of my defection is very complex and conclusion of long thoughts and considerations of the years. Unlike general public of North Korea, job of a North Korean diplomat often provides a certain level of freedom to access to the information which naturally brings a sense of comparativeness. Uh, this uh, freedom of access to information sometimes even push North Korean diplomats to double think of their status and doubt the North Korean system, especially when they read hidden stories of Kim's family. But it is not easy decision to de defect for a North Korean diplomat since all North Korean diplomats are hostages of North Korea's system of guilty of association. All the North Korean diplomats just continue their jobs for the survival of the whole family members and siblings. When Kim Jong-un first came to power, I was hopeful that he would bring some changes to North Korean system and save North Korea from poverty and oppression. But I soon fell into despair watching him purging the officials for no proper reasons and even executing his uncle. When Kim Jong-un set a fanatical goal of completion of nuclear development by 2017, using the phase of political transitions both in South Korea and United States of America, I came to a conclusion that there is no future for North Korean regime, and I thought I should do anything possible to save the North Korean people from nuclear disaster. This is one part of my reason for defection. Of course, there is also family reason for my defection. I am a father with two children. All North Korean diplomats are forced to leave at least one of their children in Pyongyang as a hostage. Kim Jong-un regime even abuses the pure love between parents and children to prevent the defection of the diplomats. But I was lucky to bring both of my sons to London and that luck prompted my preparation to defect. I decided to cut off the chain of slavery for my sons at my generation. I just wanted to hear a very simple sentence from my sons. Daddy, thank you for letting us to be a free man. Nothing is more important than the freedom of my sons. I am sure that more defections of my colleagues would take place since North Korea is already on the slippery slope. I believe that all North Korean people are entitled to the right to speak freely, the right to worship in the manner of their choice, the right to freely associate with those of like mind, the right to acquire and dispose of property, the right to leave and enter their country, the right to equal treatment and due process under law, the right to be able to participate in the government of their country, freedom from arbitrary detainment or exile, freedom from slavery and torture, and freedom from interference and coercion in the matters of conscience. But now people in North Korea do not know even basic concept of human rights. 
North Korea is the only country where system of classification of its population still exists. The people in North Korea are divided into three classes by the Workers' Party of Korea. The ruling class is called core class, which is around 20 to 25 percent of the population. And next class is called wavering class, which is estimated around 60 to 65 percent of the population. The last and the most oppressed class is called hostile class, which is around 20 to 25 percent of the population. The hostile class is deprived of the right for good jobs and university education. There is no due legal process in North Korea. The process of prompted execution of high officials like Chang Song Tae and Hyun Yong Chol, the former defense minister, are without proper legal process, are just one of the examples to prove account. Political prison camps are home to some of the greatest atrocities committed in North Korea. The North Korean regime detained citizens in political prison camps who have committed political crimes, actions contradictory to the government or leaders' wishes, but generally not considered criminal elsewhere in the world. North Korean regime has been maintaining the policy of segregation of dwarfs since Kim Il-sung period, and Kim Jong-un regime even has gone further to prevent them from having next generation. The recent assassination of Kim Jong-un's half-brother Kim Jong-nam by chemical weapon is the climax of atrocities committed by North Korea regime Kim Jong-un. Dynastic North Korean leader Kim Jong-un should be held accountable for overseeing rights, abuses, and crimes against humanity. The elite class, which supported North Korean society, have turned their backs on Kim Jong-un. Traditional structures of North Korean system are crumbling. So-called socialism is still technically in place, but it is no longer providing. So-called some of economic reforms seem succeeding, but those further down the political food chain are finding life much tougher. North Korean people are forced to contribute more than ever in terms of forced labor and cash to keep the regime afloat. North Koreans are gradually beginning to make their discontent known. Low level of dissent or criticism of the regime, until recently unthinkable, are becoming more frequent. The street market of grasshoppers are now turned into market of ticks. Corruption and South Korean movies are now a way of life, despite official attempts to stamp them out. Poorly paid officials continue to take bribes and it is the only way for high officials to make end meet. More curious North Koreans now do not listen to the regime's propaganda. When a system is on the slippery slope, the once unthinkable starts to become possible. Kim Jong-un's days are numbered. To resolve the human rights violations in North Korea and nuclear crisis on Korean Peninsula, there is no other way but to eliminate the Kim Jong-un regime. The best way to bring down Kim Jong-un regime is to disseminate external information into North Korea to educate North Korean people for popular uprising. The North Korean regime is trying its best to block external information so that the residents cannot compare the living standards with others. But control over the residents have been collapsing due to information seeping in. We should strengthen international cooperation to pressure the North Korea with sanctions and accountability for human rights violations. 
the effect of sanctions on North Korea should not be evaluated solely by numbers or market metrics. It is more important to understand the changing public sentiments and the regime's policy failures. Vaguely wishing for a change by Kim Jong-un regime cannot effect any change. Now it's time for action. I was not able to attend Oslo Freedom Forum this time due to security reasons, but I will definitely support and engage myself in your activity to put an end to the tyranny system in North Korea. I am sure that the day will come soon when North Korean people will be finally freed from slavery system like my family. Thank you.